Hey people, it is Wednesday, October the 20th, and the time is 11.20 in the morning, and the temperature is currently 17 degrees Celsius. I'm here at the corner of Young Street and Colborne Street. That's a look south down Young Street. But I will be walking east along Colborne Street, which is just a short street, a couple of blocks long. It ends up at Church Street. But I will make my way over to the St. Lawrence Market neighborhood. And I thought I'd kind of do a thorough walk around that neighborhood. I've usually just walked along Front Street or the Esplanade when I've done previous videos of the St. Lawrence neighborhood. Those are the two kind of main streets running through the area. But there are lots of shorter streets crisscrossing north to south along the length of the neighborhood. And I thought I'd sort of zigzag up and down some of those shorter streets some of which are quite nice. So here's Victoria Street, looking north. And here's the back side of the King Edward Hotel. This fronts onto King Street which is the next street to the north of Colborne Street. I think there's a little laneway I can take up here, actually. Let's take that, just to do something a little different. To make my way down to the St. Lawrence neighborhood. We have Leader Lane, and we'll also get a look at some of these beautiful old historic buildings here, with very detailed facades. And a nice little pub here. And a pretty awesome view term terminus looking west along Colborne Street. You have the Commerce Court West office tower. So here's Leader Lane. So this will take us down to Berksy Park, where the famous dog fountain is. There's some fire escapes up there. I always like to keep track of all the fire escapes. One day I'll do a video where I climb up and down all sorts of fire escapes. And you can see the L Tower and the CIBC Square Tower sort of popping out behind it. Here is the back side of the flat iron building. And this is Wellington Street.
here is Front Street. So this is one of those main streets running through the St. Lawrence neighborhood. So we'll, we will be walking along portions of Front Street as, I'm, as we make our way along. It's kind of unavoidable. Same with the Esplanade. Oh, look at this poor guy. At least he looks comfortable. So you can't wait to get that thing off his head. <laughs> I'm the worst for like sticking my hands in my mouth, like, you know, thing at a job, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're currently heading east along Front Street. Here's Church Street, so we will duck down south here on Long Church Street. And we'll start our zigzagging. And this is worth a look. This is where the original shoreline of Lake Ontario was. Shoreline commemorative. So anything south of here has been artificially filled in. So this is one of the oldest parts of the city, but there has been a lot of modern infill in the St. Lawrence neighborhood, so it's quite the mix now of old and new. And here's the only remaining Banksy in its original location in the city. I always have to point that out when I walk by. How could you not? Here's the Esplanade. This is a new development. It's just about wrapping up. I find that the lanes in Toronto always have pretty funny names. Farquhar's Lane.
Uh, here's a very pretty street, Market Street, named after the St. Lawrence Market, which is right here. And all these nice historic buildings, and some coffee shops, and other quaint business ventures. It's probably one of the most attractive streets downtown. Too bad it's so short. And a lot of the older buildings, such as these ones here, do date from the 19th century. A lot of people like to erroneously state that Toronto doesn't have any history left. Well, that's not really true. You just have to look down between all the big, tall, modern buildings and you'll see plenty of old historic buildings still standing. There's a whole block of them here. And there's the financial district. And this is the new St. Lawrence Market North Building under construction. Oh, I think I just felt a raindrop. There was no rain in the forecast when I came out today, so I didn't think I had to bring an umbrella. It actually said sunny and 20 degrees. That was the forecast. There's Jarvis Street to the north and Lower Jarvis to the south. Let's hope this rain doesn't get any heavier. and look inside the market. We have the ever-present construction.
rain is starting to come down a bit heavier now. Of course. It's a downtown alternative school. I think what I'll do is I will take out the plastic bag that I always carry around in my pocket and I'll hold it over top of the camera just to prevent the drops from <laughs> getting it too wet. Looks like we got some a gaggle of kids here. <laughs> Try to get out of out of the way here. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we're down at the southern end of George Street. That's sort of where it terminates down there. But we'll head northward along George Street. Can't trust the weather forecast. There was rain in the forecast for tomorrow, but not for today. That's kind of why I chose to do a video today instead of tomorrow. <laughs> I often do two videos back to back, so in case of days where it is raining or whatnot, I can stay in and not have to go out into the elements and still have a video to post. And if I'm feeling especially energetic, I'll do three videos in a row. And I'm getting wet. So now here we are back at Front Street. And there's an awesome view. And there's that dog again. <laughs> Get another shot looking to the west. And to the east. So we'll just go up to King Street this time. The plastic bag seems to be doing its job.
Right, now east on King Street. Well, this is Frederick Street. So we'll head south along Frederick. Lady was amused by my predicament here. <laughs> Back at Front Street, maybe I'll stand underneath this construction hoarding here momentarily just to get out of the rain. Water's still dripping down through the uh, through the boards. I'll give my arm a rest for a second, holding the plastic bag up for so long, you do start to get a sore arm. Continuing south along Frederick Street. These raindrops are actually rather large. You can definitely feel the impact when they hit you on the hand or on the fingers. Yeah, we're getting some shelter from the leaves here. This is a nice shady block.
And here we are, back down at the Esplanade again. This is one of the more attractive streets to walk along. I have to uh, do a video along here, I think, once the leaves have fully changed colors in the city. That should be quite nice. I always like to combine my Esplanade walks with the distillery district. Which is to the east up at the end of the Esplanade. Where it meets Parliament Street. And here is Lower Sherborne Street. This is starting to get tall. This massive condo development has a pretty cool name, actually. It's called Time and Space Condos. And it takes up almost the entire block. Now we're back to Front Street. And here's another new development. This one I can see out my uh, living room window actually. And this gas station is also slated to be replaced with a new residential tower. One of the last remaining gas stations downtown. I'd say there's maybe half a dozen or so gas stations such as this left downtown. And a number of them do have develop redevelopment proposals on site. I'd say within the next five years, there'll probably be just a couple left. So I think once you leave, or once you pass Sherborne Street here, you kind of start to exit the St. Lawrence neighborhood. There's a look up Sherborne Street. So I am going to wrap up the video. I managed to keep my camera dry. And here's a better look at this new development that will replace this gas station. So I hope you enjoyed the walk. 
through the St. Lawrence neighborhood, sort of zigzagging along the cross streets between the Esplanade, Front, and King Street. And leave a comment below if you enjoyed. And like and share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal and via my merch store. And you can also find me on Instagram under K Continuum. So thanks for watching, and be sure to keep checking back because, as always, I will continue. And I'll end it as soon as we get a look at this Globe and Mail head office building, which I quite like. And I'll take some shelter here.